Why I was asked to be your master of ceremonies here is because, as you might be able to tell, I'm a recovering radio talk show host. Uh, also been a professional speaker. When you're looking for Whirlpool innovation and quality, who has the answers, the selection, the price? Ventura TV Appliance. With billions in nationwide appliance buying power, more than Home Depot and Best Buy combined will help you save. Our low prices on Energy Star qualified Whirlpool appliances save you energy and money and pay no interest on select models when paid in full within 12 months. Ventura TV Appliance, serving you since 1951. Hi, I'm John Malos. Welcome to this live edition of Connect With Me on the showroom floor on this Labor Day Monday. It's not on the air off the presses today. We'll be talking city politics with a former city council member here in the city of Fresno. You can call in. We'll be here for the full 60 minutes today from 10 to 11, 436, MeTV, option 11. Do call in, turn down the sound. Usually we do an on the air, off the presses here on Mondays at Connect With Me on the showroom floor at Ventura TV. But today it's a Your Community Day because we have a former Fresno City Councilman in the house today talking about some city politics and the Fresno Grizzlies and a few other things we'll get to in a moment. But first, I want to mention that, uh, you know, our show is seen live here on Comcast 187 and 43.6. And now we are seen live on Me TV on 13.1. That's another station. And you can watch the replay of this program at 1 o'clock today at 13.6. U2 and Biz TV at 8 o'clock. It replays on 13.1. Five. And so you have plenty of chances to watch the replay of the show. But if you want to call in right now and talk to us live and ask a question, 436 Me TV Option 11. You know, today is the last day of the baseball season for the Fresno Grizzlies. They play a home game starting at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Do you realize this could be the last game that the Fresno Grizzlies play as an affiliate of the San Francisco Giants. I'm going to roll the videotape. We've all seen Chickchancy Ch Park, an absolutely gorgeous stadium. Uh, the Grizzlies have been playing here since 2002. It's one of the best minor league facilities in the entire country. There is not any question about that. No one's quivering about that. But what most people are alarmed at is the fact that the you know, the Grizzlies in the city, they keep changing, you know, the amount of, of, of money that the Grizzlies own. You know, they keep changing the contract. You know, they have a, a certain amount of debt service because you have bonds that the city has to pay off. And so the Grizzlies are paying, or they were paying, about $1.5 million a year to the city for the rights to play in that stadium. That since has been renegotiated in the last five, six years. They're now paying half of that, and they still can't make that payment. Recently, Chris Cummings, the owner of the Fresno Grizzlies, was here saying that uh, he was either going to make or has made that $500,000 payment to the city. Uh, in years past, Ch uh, the Chickchancy Casino has also chipped in a million dollars. But now Chris Cummings is saying in a recent article in the Fresno Bee written by George Hostetter that he wants to sell the team and is very close to selling the team to a potential investor. If that happens, there are so many questions that need to be answered. Live in our studio right now to try to answer some of those questions is former Fresno City Councilman Ken Stites. He voted against the stadium being built initially back in 2001, you might recall, when he sat uh, and in that seat at Fresno City Hall, you can call in, ask Ken a question, 436 Me TV, option 11. The other question is if the Grizzlies are sold, will they go or will they stay? 
Today's game is at 1 o'clock. You can go out and see them. Not too many people show up for these games. On occasion, they get 11 or 12,000, but on average, it's anywhere from four to 5,000 a game. Back with your phone calls in just a moment. Frigidaire. We introduce the first home freezer. The first pulsator agitator washer. And now we introduce the Frigidaire Orbit Clean Dishwasher, designed with a unique wash arm that gives you four times more water coverage for a consistently better clean. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. We're back here talking city politics. You know, we could have a two hour, a three hour, we could talk all day until five o'clock about city politics and what it means to the city of Fresno, at least the last 10 or 15 years or so, and what's gone on there. But Ken Stites, former Fresno City Councilman, is here to talk about this baseball issue. Today is the last game of the season for the Grizzlies. We don't know yet. I don't think we'll know until sometime in October mm -hmm. whether or not the affiliation with the Giants will continue. That being aside, that's kind of a minor issue compared to what's going on. Uh, you read the article by George Hostetter. Right. Cummings was here talking about, hey, he can't sustain anymore. He's mm -hmm. losing too much money. Mm -hmm. what, what, what's going on here, well, in your opinion? That, that was always a potential. I, I mean, just looking back and seeing what was discussed at that time, this getting to this point was always a potential, you know, yeah. and, and so that was, I think, some of the people that had reservations about the size of the stadium because I, I don't think anybody was against a stadium it was yeah. the size of the stadium and I think this kind of situation was always a potential and that's why I think some members wanted to get a smaller indebtedness because if there's no tenant the city still is gonna have to come up with that three million dollar a year payment they so gotta pay no the matter, bonds right exactly and that's always gonna be the highest priority payment out of the general fund is that bond payment because they don't want to go into default. So. Yeah, so that's what happens if you don't pay off the bond. It goes into default and then mm -hmm. your credit rating as a city yeah, goes down? Yeah, exactly. And then for, for other items like uh, wastewater treatment plants and water projects and anything else that the city goes out to bond, it's going to cost a tremendous amount of more money. So yeah, they're, they're always going to make that payment. and. This was always a potential, and you always try to minimize this kind of thing from happening, but it, it's a real possibility, just like any, any kind of loan. Right, it's like any kind of loan. Now, um, let's take you back to 2001 when you sat on that council. You voted against the stadium, you and Chris Matisse, I believe? Yes. Yeah, but you didn't, you weren't, and I want you to clarify, and I think you kind of just did in your opening statement there, but. Uh, you weren't voting against a baseball stadium in Fresno. You were voting against what? No, well, because we knew at that time that the Grizzlies were going to have to make a million and a half year payment to make this deal work. Yeah. And we knew looking at every AAA baseball stadium deal, nobody was paying over 800000 So at that point, we were asking the Grizzlies to come in pay double what every other AAA stadium lease was going to be. And we knew that that was always going to be a strain on the finances. But they agreed to it, and so they, the city went along and, and they had the votes to make that happen. What some of the other proposals were, let's cut the, uh, cut the size of the stadium down. We're not going to get 12,000 people at every game. You get a 10,000 seat one without all the fancy, fancy add-ons like the swimming pool and all of that and get a $20 million deal so if there ever was a default or a payment we could charge less on a lease and the liability the city was on the hook for was quite a bit less. Yeah, because even if you built a 10,000 seat stadium as you see now, they're not drawing 10,000 people on average a game. They're drawing anywhere from four to five, I think. Um, on occasion, you'll see them. Yeah. You yeah, know, Fourth of July. I mean, there's opening it. day. Yeah. There's there's sure. a, there's some days, but I mean, overall, I mean, the the stadium. You know, you you'd always want to get. You wanted to build one that you can afford. Right. And, and this one definitely was not. You didn't think the city of Fresno could afford this stadium. No, no. I mean, we were looking at that time. I mean, if you go back in that time, the 
the $3 million hit per year was a major hit. I mean, that if, if the Grizzlies don't pay that, then that you're talking a lot of police, fire, a lot of city services that are going to be affected by that non-payment. So yeah. those are the things that you want you want to look at when you're making that kind of decision but i mean it's all good and set i mean I, it's easier to say oh i told yeah. you so but you yeah. know that that's pointless the yeah. fact is is we are where we're at now what do we do <laughs> you know? caller you're on the air go ahead your guest is talking about the stadium being too much too big too large of a project too expensive was he advocating at the time i don't remember following that this is more than 10 years ago following the story, but what did your guest advocate as a manageable size, something that would be, I don't know, affordable and practical? There's been talk last week on the show that the venue is too big for any kind of entertainment. Mm -hmm. Bringing entertainment is just too hard to fill it. What did your guest think that the ideal venue size would have been, and would you have picked a different location besides Broadway and uh, to Larry Street? Good question. <laughs> I, at that time, I was definitely advocating a half the deal. It was $20 million. Could have built a very nice stadium in downtown Fresno. But to tell you the truth, I would go, when I was running for city council back in 1996, I went and met with a number of community leaders around Fresno. That was part of running for office. And Time after time after time, I was told w if it was built where the old Woodward Park Drive-In was, right there on 41 in Herndon, where Costco is now, oh yeah, it would have been privately funded and it would have been filled every night. So I mean, I I, I would talk to very uh, Chamber of Commerce community leaders all the time, and they said downtown is not the place for that stadium. The place for the stadium is up in North Fresno where the people will come out and watch baseball. And downtown is not the place for that stadium because why? Well, just because the, it, it, when you, here in Fresno, it's unique. Like I was, I was at the USC Fresno State game this past weekend. Sorry and to it, hear that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the, the highlight of the trip was yeah. the Goodyear blimp flying over the stadium. <laughs> or maybe the drive back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, but it, you know, there, them driving an hour or a half an hour to an event is is a normal thing but here in fresno if you have to go more than 20 minutes to a half an hour that's a major drive well and it's, it's, it's very it's, discouraged you know it's you're discouraged from attending that event if it's more than a half hour drive but isn't it also have to do with the uh, perception of downtown fresno it being unsafe at I, night especially at night well i don't know if it's more unsafe i think it's more of people aren't familiar with downtown they don't know where to park. They don't know, you know, there, there's a lot of different factors in it, and that could be one, but I think it's just people's whole perception of, I've got to drive downtown, I've got to navigate parking, I've got to walk, you know, a distance to get to the game. You know, all of those things. And I then think they were like, giving parking tickets a few years yes, ago. Remember that? Yes, I remember when it first started, Not but that was part of the contract. You know, anyone that parked in downtown yeah. Fresno on a game day was going to be subject to the parking fee. So. Yeah, yeah, and so at the time, I believe Matisse also voted against it. Mayor Patterson, in a strong form of mayor government here, um, you know, obviously he didn't have a vote on the council, but well, um, he vetoed the he, deal, he and then it was overwritten. Right, overridden. right. But he spoke out against it. Uh, he didn't think it was a good deal for the city. And here's another thing to think about that George Hostetter brought up when he was here a week ago. I hadn't even thought of this. Okay, let's say you do get an investor in here. Um, the debt on that stadium a year is uh, $750,000 from the Grizzlies. That's what they mm -hmm. owe a year. You might have some investor come in here and say, hey, I'll buy the team, but you know what? I'll give you a couple hundred thousand a year and that's it. The city will be on the hook for the rest of it. Yeah, and that was always, that was always out there. Those, those, were, those were the... Uh, comments always made because it, these kind of agreements aren't set in stone. I mean, the, the, they can sell. There was, a, I think, some clauses in there that the ownership um, had to pass, but there's, there's nothing in contractual law that will force somebody 
to make a payment for the life of a of, of a loan not in even a baseball the stadium deal not yeah, even the Grizzlies. Not, and, and that was always one of the potential downside that's why people that supported a stadium but not a 40 million dollar stadium they looked at a 20 million reduced the liability that the city had and and if something ever happened where there wasn't payment the amount of uh, hit on the general fund would be more minimal yeah all right we're talking with ken steitz he's a former fresno city councilman who was on the council at the time voted against the baseball stadium uh he explained why and we'll get into more talk about the grizzlies and the baseball stadium mayor ashley swearingen a few other things and whatever might be on your mind 436 me tv option 11 on this labor day here on connect with me Considering solar, whether you're ready to buy now or just exploring your options, the consultants at Solar Negotiators are here to help you. A call to Solar Negotiators is like calling five solar companies at once. You see, when local established solar contractors have gaps in their schedule, they call Solar Negotiators to fill them. Right now, get five years of panel cleaning and maintenance or $1,000 off your new solar panels. So stop wasting your time searching and call Solar Negotiators because when contractors compete for your business, you win. Back here on the show, we have a call coming in. Good morning, caller. What's your question? Uh, well, really, it, my, my statement is, uh, is that it's really the management of the facility that's really the problem. Uh, I mean, I, I worked there at the facility, and I, about four years ago, they had a big draw with uh, Bob Dylan as an outdoor concert, and they, they sold out the entire facility. And then, of course, on top of that, uh, people that, that were on the field that would watch the concert. And whenever the Grizzlies are done playing, the, the stadium sits unused. And so uh, you know, you've had a couple of soccer games there, and it's been sold out. But essentially, the facility goes unused. And I think if you brought in more people to have concerts out there, you know, big name people like you had, like Bob Dylan, and so forth, that would help to bring down the rent for the Grizzlies. That I think. Yeah. So you work at the facility, is that it? Yeah. What do you do out there? Oh, I have uh, set up all the uh, all those outdoor all those venues and stuff. Uh, like uh, we had uh, Pacific College, Pacific University, Fresno Pacific have their graduation out there, and a friend of mine who works for Fresno Pacific said it only cost Fresno Pacific $2,000 to rent that stadium, and that was because the president knew a friend, had a friend in the city manager's office that gave him that nice little $2,000 rent fee, which is nothing. Okay, and so you think, it sh you think that um, uh, management is not doing a good job of, of no, running no. the facility? Doing a good job bringing in uh, bringing in uh, 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 concerts and so forth that would br generate funds for it, that would help alleviate other rents for other people that are there. Okay. Well, I appreciate the comments, and uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for calling in. Do you want to react to anything he said? Well, th that was always one of the um, one of the items that they proposed, saying, oh, it's going to bring all these concerts, it's going to bring all kinds of events into. The problem is this. You have baseball uh taking 72 dates during the summertime from spring to fall. Well, during sp the summer months, it's very difficult to have a concert there because of the weather and because of the events that are already going on there. And who would, where would you rather go to a concert, Safe Mart Center or Selen Arena or outside in, in the, uh, you know, depending on the weather. So outside of September and, and March, where the rain could possibly you know, touch it those yeah. months, it's very difficult to book events. I mean, I saw Huey Lewis out there. I saw the Beach Boys out there. And, and even seeing those concerts, the venue itself, you are so far away from the entertainment. It's such a big facility it, for a it, concert. It is. Even watching high school football there is very too, too it's far just away from weird the field. watching the game yeah soccer you're, games you're, all you're, of it you're, you're too, too far too far away it's a I baseball think, stadium what are we looking at here is that the uh we're looking at uh, what, what a video fresno is this state. Uh, fresno state and then uh save mart center yes uh, I mean, so the save mart center is competition for uh chick chancy park mm. as is selland arena a little bit so selland would be i don't know yeah. if, if really safe mart i mean that that venue is a lot larger that's safe mart right yes. there. that's a beautiful facility mm -hmm. for a concert it's great yeah but back in 2001 when when the stadium was built there wasn't this competition 
I mean, you basically had Selland Arena, maybe the convention center. Well, no, when the stadium was built, they, Safe Mart was already on the books and already, already in the midst of being but it built. Wasn't, but it wasn't built yet. It, 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 I think but it, it was in the midst of yeah I mean built. it was in construction during yeah. that time but yeah. but we always knew that but the amount of dates very limits because there are certain community days and I believe he was speaking about the gentleman on the call was speaking about uh, city manager's office offering a certain well there's like eight eight community days where each of the council members can have an event there and I think some of them are being used like they have the brew fest there. They have different community yeah. events that happen at that venue. And you can't but. exactly have something in the middle of summer. Forget about the heat. Forget about you know springtime. If you're in the middle of a baseball season and uh, you have a concert there, let's say you bring somebody like Bob Dylan or anybody mm -hmm. else, um, it really puts a strain not only on the crew that has to change over that field you got to tear down the mm -hmm. mound you've got to mm -hmm. tear out home plate you've got to tear out the bullpens and now the infield and outfield grass could be torn up mm -hmm. so you're kind of you're kind of putting a strain on the field too for the players that actually have to play on that during the course of the season so how many concerts can you actually do there Besides, I mean, forget about Sabmar, forget about everything else, just that point alone. No, the logistics is definitely an issue, but when you bring in acts, they're expecting to get paid a certain amount of money, and mm -hmm. you're going to have to have a certain amount of tickets sold. And for those to happen, I'm selling Warners, yeah. and you know, there's a lot of different comp competitive Better venues. venues. Exactly. Better venues, exactly. that's right. Caller, you're on the air, go ahead. Yeah, you guys are talking about putting another nail in the coffin for Fresno downtown. You know, when uh, you move that uh, baseball park, uh, you're going to take a lot of steps from downtown. You're always wanting to uh, revitalize downtown. Why don't you talk about that? Mm -hmm. Okay, go. go ahead, Ken. Yeah. Thank you, caller. Thank you. That That's a very good point. And I, and I was talking to John about that earlier. When, when this stadium was being discussed about being built, we were going to have hundreds of millions of dollars invested in downtown as a result of this $40 million investment by the city. Yeah. And my question is, is after 13 years, where are the hundreds of millions of dollars of investment? Uh, I, I frankly think there's a lot better opportunities for revitalization. I never looked at the stadium as a, quote, revitalization. Uh, deal it, or it just, a money maker yeah I mean the stadium <laughs> a stadium is only being used a certain amount of days per year and for downtown to be revitalized there has to be an everyday thing going on and I think that's why a CMEs and people that are investing in housing I think is the best idea to help revitalize downtown and they're not doing that because of the downtown stadium they're doing it because it makes sense financially but is it still like, you know, I I've, I've occasionally read these articles in the paper. Is it still the case uh, or the idea that we have a tale of two cities? One is north of Shaw and the rest is the rest of Fresno. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I always like I mean, you look at every city. Go and look at every city the size of Fresno. Or I bigger. Mean, or bigger. And yeah. look at their downtown. Where are the poorest areas in that town? It's the areas that are the oldest, that are the uh, usually the center parts of their communities. There's a few areas that are, in few cities that aren't like that because they are able to get funds, federal funds that aren't available now. They were able to get federal funds back in the day where they could invest billions of dollars. But we don't have big Fortune 500 companies investing in downtown Fresno. Indianapolis has Eli Lilly. I was just going to mention Indianapolis. Yeah, I mean, Indianapolis, I love. Baltimore. Yeah, I mean, um, but all of those, they have federal monies and they have private investors that are willing to spend billions. Fresno doesn't have that. Even Sacramento now, they're tearing out the downtown mall to put that new arena up. So their downtown is going to be revitalized, I, I'm assuming, with the Kings. Well, I don't think it's going to, it's not going to be revitalized. You're You're adding a you're adding a, a feature to an already nice downtown. 
Right. I mean that that's now, what you're doing. Their downtown is. Eh, mm. it it's it's uh, it depends it's, on what you mean by their downtown. Well, See, if Fresno, you look at their K Street Mall up there, it's it's pretty shaky. But yeah. I mean, uh, I mean that's going to improve the area. I think they're going to put businesses around it. But you're talking about a professional basketball yeah. an NBA team versus a minor league team. Yeah. You know, they, they draw pretty big crowds there. That's right. So there's a big and, difference. And, and there'll be concerts there. There'll be things yeah. around the year going on at that event center. Yeah. You know, so it's very different. Okay. I thought we had a call here. No, we don't. But your phone calls are important. 436, Me TV Option 11, talking to Ken Stites. Hey, you remember him. He was on the council at one time. Mm -hmm. And uh, who knows, he might run again. We'll ask him when we come back here on Connect With Me. Hit me again! <laughs> Chief, I think we got a hit on our Me TV Fresno, now on Comcast Channel 187. Back here on the program with Ken Stites talking about the baseball stadium in downtown Fresno. By the way, in case you want to check them out, uh, the Grizzlies play their last uh, game of the year um, at 1 o'clock today at uh, Chichancy Park. And uh, might be the last time they could be affiliated with the San Francisco Giants. We don't know that and won't know that until sometime in October, probably. Yeah, I think I think once the baseball season is over, the Giants themselves will themselves will reevaluate the situation but talking to Chris Cummings when he was here a few weeks ago he was saying and I don't know if it if he if he was specifically targeting the Bob Dylan uh, concert but he said a big name came there at, was it Toby Keith okay Toby Keith came and demanded to have this stage brought in from Oregon it cost the Grizzlies two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to have that special stage transported to Fresno and back up to Oregon. Now, how much are you going to make on a Toby Keith concert? Are you going to make that money back? 250 grand? I, I, That's part of the problem, yeah. too, when you have entertainers like that that bring on these demands that are unreasonable sometimes. Yeah, Would you and agree? That's why, well, I mean, that, that, that's why people bring the truckloads in for Safe Mart Center, for selling for venues that are set up for concerts. So, yeah. it, you know, it's just the, the, part of the stadium deal was to have the fancy stage that can roll in and out without damaging well, they, the... they have it there, the, but yeah. it just sits there. Yeah. It's sitting there, where is it, on Eno uh, <laughs> yeah. Street? It yeah. just sits there and, yeah. you know, it's collecting dust, yeah. uh, not being used. But um, uh, so when you face, uh, you know, all these re unreasonable demands from talent, then you look at the logistics, and then you look at the competition. There are other venues to go to. Um, it's kind of a lose situation. Yeah, and I, I, you know, regarding the Giants not being an affiliate. Who cares? Well, I mean, a lot of people do, yeah. but I'm, that's a very likely scenario. Uh, caller, you're on the air. Yeah, I was just um, calling about, you know, basically to, to, to add to this is the high speed rail is most likely coming. I, most, I know most conservatives don't like that, but. It is coming, and it's coming near the park. So that's, just, I used to live in Japan, and, and that's train stations, while the, the structure of the structure different in Japan, um, they do bring people. And so if, a, if, if one of these downtown developers builds some more additional housing, and there's restaurants put in, and Chinatown maybe may or may not get better, but all that's in that same area. So whether, you know, people that want to spend money in downtown like it or not, that train probably is coming, and so that could also help in some aspects we're bringing foot traffic and bringing more people to the games in the summer. So I just wanted to bring up the, the high speed rail. I know that's a touchy subject, but. Yeah. Okay. So how do you feel about the stadium? Uh, do you think, do you think uh, the Grizzlies will be sold? Do you think the stadium should n never have been built? What are your thoughts? Yeah. I mean, I, it seems like in retrospect that maybe it shouldn't have been, but I, I'm still happy that it was because it's very nice. And I probably only go to one or two Grizzly games a year. Baseball is not my favorite sport, but it is nice to go to that stadium. It is a very nice stadium. I think, I really think that 
Well, like you were saying, Ken, I believe that's your name, uh, when you get more people doing day-to-day things down there, that that will fill that stadium, and that will probably provide enough revenue for them to stay if they if they mm-hmm. were able to stay long enough for that to happen. Yeah. But mm-hmm. um, I think there needs to be more restaurants in downtown Fresno. I think that would bring a lot of people. Just, just restaurants alone, I think, would bring a lot more people to downtown. And then obviously big businesses like Ikea and things like that. I don't know why. People don't approach businesses like that. But I can promise you, everyone from all over Fresno County would come if it was something like Ikea and, and more shopping. And, yeah. and uh, you know, if I was a billionaire, I'd definitely build a river park in downtown. I mean, it's just a no-brainer. But, yeah. you know, right. I, I think you just need, like like you said, Ken, more, more day-to-day things. Things where people live, work, supermarkets, yeah. like you know, tower, restaurants. Like you know, like the tower. Yeah, I mean, yeah, tower is very good. I mean... My dad just bought a home in town, and I was kind of upset that he did that. But, um, you know, hey, he, 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 and he gave me a hard time. Well, don't you want to revitalize downtown? I said, you're right. But, you know, Tower's nice. It has kind of an eclectic mix of all kinds of different stuff. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, I like Tower, but um, I don't know. You know, I, I think some stuff, Tower has a cultural element where I think just a kind of a regular run-of-the-mill, you know, McDonald's and, and or, uh, you know, restaurants, you know, that are popular throughout the United States or, you know, uh, you know, homegrown restaurants in downtown Fresno, an area where, you know, people can kind of feel okay. safe. Because uh, downtown still is, you know, shoddy in some right. areas, but it's getting a lot better. So okay. there's a lot of, I go down there on the weekdays, and there's a lot of people in suits walking around, businessmen, yeah. lawyers, whatever, so that, that creates a good environment. So. Okay, thank you for the call. Appreciate it. But uh, you notice, too, that the Grizzlies don't have too many day games, especially in the summer. It's too hot. Mm-hmm. Uh, they do They do have some. There's one today at 1 o'clock, yeah. but at least it's not 106. Yeah. <laughs> so... That's another factor is um, do you go to a game when it's so hot in the summer? I'll bet the weather, too, could, could, could be a factor. Well, it, it is. I mean, the, the, the bottom line is if no matter what happens, like if the Giants affiliation goes up to Sacramento, Fresno will definitely have another affiliation. There will be AAA baseball. And that won't have a major effect if well, the Giants I mean, for stay people, or they leave. Well, some people are really, I, I mean, I grew up here going to the Fresno Giants at John right. Euless Park. So that affiliation where you could see a young giant, hey, I, I saw uh, Jack Clark and Gary Matthews and a number of these guys that went up to through the system, ended up in San Francisco. It was yep. always nice going out there. Well, yeah, that's a long time. That's ago. a you big bring up Jack. Clark. <laughs> yeah, God, that was like a hundred years ago, wasn't it? <laughs> Holy cow! It How old a... are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know the high-speed rail. You know the gentleman brought up the high-speed rail. Though that that I see as that is not going to happen in my lifetime. I mean, you don't I, think I, that's going to be built? I, well, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying if it does get built. It's not going to be in my lifetime, <laughs> you know. So, so you know the the fact of the impact it's going to have on downtown Fresno, I don't believe is going to have, you know. That's it's not going to have a major forty impact. years down the road. Yeah, you know? we won't be here then. exactly. <laughs> Caller, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, so I'm just wondering why hasn't the city council ever learned that Fresno has never been able to support a uh, a, a professional a professional team. Uh, you look back and uh, in Fresno's history, and you've had the, the Fresno Falcons are in town, and mm-hmm. and they're the first thing they said was, oh, you know what, Salon Arena is too small. You know, we need a bigger arena, and they go and they expand uh, Salon from 6,000 to 10,000 seats, and then it's Falcons go, well, you know, now it's uh, the inside of the arena. We need new seats, mm-hmm. and then uh, the city pays and they buy new seats for the arena, and then it's like now they're gone. You know. Yeah. And then, uh, and then the, the monsters come in, and then they want their stuff, and then it's like, you know, and then we, and Fresno still couldn't support them, and so the, the monsters are gone. Uh, you know, Euless Park, you look at back to Euless when the Giants were there in our, in our single-A team, you know, they wanted a better facility. They, they left because we didn't have a good baseball facility, you know, and now we have, you know, this facility, and it's too good, I guess. And yeah. so they're going to leave because the rent's too high. You know, so, you know, Fresno has never been able to support any kind of professional team. We tried to have a, an ABA basketball team back in the early 70s, and they flopped out. So, you know, Fresno's <laughs> been a, the, historically a, a lousy city for, for, professional, for professional teams. Yeah, well, you, you seem to know your Fresno history pretty well. I appreciate the phone call very much, sir. But, but I really think that Fresno can support a professional team. If the Oakland Raiders moved to Fresno... Wow. I guarantee you that would that would be, be a sold-out 
that would be a sold out stadium well, every home game. It, not if you build a 90,000 seat <laughs> stadium, it wouldn't be sold out. You, you have know, to build it within know. reason. It's like That's this stadium true. here. That's you got to build it within reason. Don't build, you know, don't have don't have a stadium like in Oakland now where you got Mount Davis exactly. out yes. there and nobody yes. goes. That's I true. mean, I'm not not as many no, because go of the now way the stadium is. Because of the way the yeah. stadium is. Uh, caller, you're on the air. Go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, first of all, uh, if Los Angeles cannot uh, handle uh, a uh, professional football or uh, a team, how in the heck could Fresno? And two, the, 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 the thought that Oakland Raiders would move to Fresno? Get real. We know the history of, of the Raiders. Unless you're going to pay for a brand new stadium and pay a billion dollars royalty, that team isn't going to move to town. They've done it before. Would you go they, see the Raiders? They're play? like a frog. They just move from place to place. I think, I think hey, caller, caller, this I think guy, we were, caller, who, caller. What what we were talking about is just in theory. We we were talking in re, re, we weren't talking reality. The Raiders we all know are not going to move here. We don't have the revenue to build a stadium here. We're not a major league type city. We all know that. But in theory, you know, there's so many Raider fans here uh, and 49er fans that the, the stadium probably would sell out. But then we all know that's not going to happen. Hey, we're bigger than Green Bay. I. I you know, I don't know. <laughs> what's what's the idea that any professional team would move to Fresno? No, the no, the comment no, no. was is that the prior person <laughs> was prior prior caller was saying that Fresno has always had a bad history with professional sports teams, and I think everybody agrees with that. And I made a joke saying that the Raiders could be the most successful pro team here, so it wasn't a serious hey. Let's have a petition to get the Raiders to move to Fresno. It was yeah. more of a just okay, comment. What's, what's, what's the real topic of the day then? Okay, the real topic of the day is this uh, baseball stadium that we have here. The Grizzlies play their last uh, game of the season today at one o'clock. Talking about the Grizzlies being on the the the, the uh, uh, for sale. They're on the sale block, and uh, that's basically the topic of the day. And how Fresno cannot afford to either have this baseball team or this stadium any longer. So what, what will happen in the future if this team is sold? That's the topic the of the day. The future is that, that Fresno will be Fresno, and it doesn't <laughs> need a team, and never did need a team. And, and cities do not need a team to basically thrive and survive. They need business <laughs> activity. Mm -hmm. They don't need professional athletic sports teams to be a real city. Fresno is a real city, and until people put their hat on and accept the fact that that is the real reality of yeah, life Yeah, but let me ask Fresno. the caller something. I know we got to go to bed, but caller, let me ask you something. Would you not agree that sports gives a city an identity? Don't the Bulldogs give us a sense of identity with Fresno State? Yes, a very bad one, because 90% of the Corcoran inmates are Bulldogs. The people in. I'm no, talking about the Fresno State football team. I understand, but that now, if you're out from outside the, the area, one is identical to the other. I'm from Los Angeles. When I moved up here, it, it's still the identity. From outside the area of Fresno, the Bulldogs are the Bulldogs, and it's a bad taste okay, in everybody's but you said, mouth outside the Fresno okay, area. But, 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 but I'm saying you said that, that Fresno doesn't need a sports team. Doesn't it need something like a sports team to give it a positive identity? That's what I'm, that's my point. It doesn't, I agree. It does not need any type of sports activity whatsoever, including Fresno State. Um, it needs you miss my point. A city activity, nothing more. Yeah, no, you missed my point. I'm not agreeing with you. I'm saying Fresno does need something positive to so people can identify with in sports. No, oftentimes. absolutely not. That's not what a city is. No. There's 500 incorporated cities in the state of California. If each one needed a professional athletic team or some athletic team to have an identity, then, the, then Atwater would not have any, any, a city identity. 
I beg to differ with you because look no further than Sacramento. I think the Kings have given that city, city an identity at least initially for the first 10, 15 years. Now it's kind of swung the other way and they're building a new arena. So I think that... Well, we, we, dis we disagree because I mm -hmm. don't think that, like I said, any of the other 500 incorporated cities in the city, in the state of California, uh, require an, a, 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 a team of some uh, nature to have a status of, well, of an incorporated town. Well, then why don't you take the Giants out of San Francisco and see what, see, see what happens there? Yeah. San Francisco <laughs> is San Francisco. Yeah. You mentioned San Francisco. I understand that. But you I'm... know what? More people identify with, uh, <laughs> uh, with Tony Bennett than they do with the, the Giants. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you, but the the no, colors, I agree with you. Call somebody in New York them. City, yeah, all right. yeah, I and agree. you mention Tony Bennett, they'll think think of Tony Bennett or San Francisco. Yeah. They'll think of Tony Bennett. No, and I, I or the I earthquake agree. in 1906. I agree. Yeah, he, he he makes a wonderful point. I mean, the point is the other thing the is, city is they'll think of Hay hey, hey Ashbury. They'll think of <laughs> yeah. um, unfortunately the, the the gay population. Don't think there's all sorts of other journey things <laughs> that people think of other than a <laughs> professional team. If that's not true, look at Los Angeles. It's the number two largest city in the United States. It does not have a professional football team. But Los Angeles has never really supported much of anything. You USC. look at the dot. Wow. USC's their uh, team. I know you're a USC guy, right? No, like I'm USC, a Fresno State guy. Oh, well, State. But, no, but, but, but his USC point is does, well uh, taken. Does seem but to I have disagree a, to a certain a good, extent uh, because, be, be, because of the, uh, I don't know. I, we got to take a break. I'm being waved here. But I disagree, and I'll explain uh, on the other side of the caller. Thank you very much for your opinion. And uh, you can call in at 436, me TV option 11 and weigh in. I'm getting the heave ho. Get out of here. Back mm. in just a moment. No, oh, that's a good point. Considering solar, whether you're ready to buy now or just exploring your options, the consultants at Solar Negotiators are here to help you. A call to Solar Negotiators is like calling five solar companies at once. You see, when local established solar contractors have gaps in their schedule, they call Solar Negotiators to fill them. Right now, get five years of panel cleaning and maintenance or $1,000 off your new solar panels. So stop wasting your time searching and call Solar Negotiators because when contractors compete for your business, you win. Uh, we're having the great, the great debate here on Connect With Me, uh, whether or not a sports team actually gives a city an identity. And I think, you know, just look at the Dodgers. The Dodgers are in first place, and if you look at half of their games on television, you, you, you can see the cameras panning along the stands. Stadium's half empty. Why? Because it's Los Angeles. Well, no, it's because... Tickets cost $100 a ticket, and, Dodger and you can watch them on to. TV. Yeah, but see, but the, the caller's point was this. A city in and of itself has its own character, has its own positives and negatives, but really but Fresno a is a, can add outside of any sports team in Fresno, Fresno is a great place to live. There's but a sports team can here. add to that. It oh, can yeah, bring people yes. together. Yes, right? it can. And give it identity. But to say that the... The city needs to have a sport. I think the caller hit it right on the head there. Caller, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yes, I like this, this gentleman apparently said that he was a past council member and that he voted against the stadium. Yes, sir. Then I guess we can use was vindicated because it took <laughs> nine point some million dollars from the water treatment fund to pay the bond uh, that is uh, due. And then they then. So then they turn around and jack up our water rates. Then we turn right around and beat them on it. And now they turn right around now, and they just went ahead and made the contract without any input from the city voters. So you were right. They should never have built that damn stadium. <laughs> okay. Thank you for the call. I really appreciate your comments. I appreciate all the comments today. Great calls today. So do you kind of... You know, Walker, when you read articles like what Hostetter wrote about the Grizzlies in the Fresno Bee about, uh, about uh, 10 days ago, something like that, great article. Um, love his writings uh, at the Bee. When you look at a story like that, do you sometimes just jump up and down and do backflips and say, see, 
I told you so in no. 2001, and you weren't listening. No, nope, because you go back to that time, and it's kind of like, yeah, you you could do that, and no. I I I decide not to because it doesn't it doesn't achieve any purpose. I mean, the yeah. purpose is is yeah, you could sit there and say, oh, see, I told you so. You should have listened. You should have looked at all. But what good is that? We have a stadium now. I want I go to the stadium. I want to see it be a success because it's here. There's no point in saying, "Oh, you should have done that, could have done this, should have done." It's it's a yeah. pointless conversation because the stadium is there and now we have to make the best of it. See, you're bigger than that. You're just going to walk above it, right? You don't need to get into that it, game of, "See, I told you so." Yeah, that's, there's, that's there's childish, you know, right? I think well, it it is if you want to just play on your own ego and all that, but there is one thing I mean, I think it's a wake-up call for any city council yeah. thinking about doing a big stadium. I yeah. mean, they should think twice, and they should look at numbers a lot more closely. Uh, good morning. You're on Connect With Me, caller. Yes, I'd like to ask Mr. Stites, wasn't there anything in the uh, contract that the Diamond Group and the city uh, came up with that uh, said that they, they couldn't uh, renege? On, on or leave the, the, the Fresno until that uh, that bond measure was paid for? Yeah, that's yeah. a good question. No, that, that was always part of the agreement, but in contract law, there's no way you can enforce that agreement. So really, yeah. the agreement is really <laughs> just words on so a piece of paper. The, so is that how the council kind of suckered the the city of Fresno, the voters into agreeing with this. I mean, well, there was I mean, no if there, vote. If there's no way you can. Uh, if there's no way you can uh, can uh, you know uh, make them stay for 30 years. You know, I mean, is that how they kind of city got kind of suckered into it? Well, th there was always the uh, the the that that was always what people that had questions about the stadium deal. There was no way to secure that promise. And and so the it, Cartwright it, probably knew that too. Well, yeah, and it's not the Diamond Group anymore. There's all it's a new ownership, yeah. you know. So there there there's no way that you can, you know, at that point there was no way to enforce such a such a section in a contract. Now, see, you're going to think that I'm comparing apples to oranges, but I disagree with you and the caller. A sports team does give a city identity. I bring up. The Red Sox in Boston, the Yankees in New York, the Orioles in Baltimore, but the, the Boston Celtics. But the argument against the that would Boston be outside Celtics. of any sports, Boston is a beautiful town. It's got history. It's got character. It's got clam chowder. It's got <laughs> lobster. You know, the I mean, it really, Louis. if there was never a football or a baseball team associated with that city, that city stands on its own because it's a great city. And what would St. Louis be if the Cardinals ever you, moved? You have the arch. You have the uh, <laughs> Rush <laughs> Limbaugh. Rush Limbaugh that. from that, on radio there. I, I mean, I, I point out all of these cities that have identity because of their sports teams. No, I think that's an additional to the city. I mean, to, to tie Fresno to being a sports town. What's I think the first doing, thing you think of when you think of Boston? First thing. First thing? Yeah. I think of Clam Chowder and, and Paul Revere. No, those are the first things. I don't know. I, I bet a lot of people think of Fenway Park. Maybe well, they no, think of the, the sports fans do. You know, the yeah, sports fans do. Yeah, but you don't have to be do. a sports fan to think of that. But but I think the argument is is that a city stands on its own without any sports okay. associated. Monterey. What do you think of when Monterey? They don't have a sports team. No, I think of Carmel and I think of the <laughs> exactly. <over there. laughs> All right, go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Well, I don't understand something. Why is it that we can spend three million dollars for a stadium here and have all this trouble, not even the, uh, have the books examined to where they know that it's going to be uh, feasible to pay it back? And then here, when we need all this water and everything else, and uh, don't tell me we didn't start having a story uh, in uh, uh, shorties in 2001 that it wasn't there. Why in the world could we have pet spent three million dollars on a water program, and now I hear you're taking money away from the water program to pay the bonds for this stupid stadium? And I got another question: We got the Radcliffe Stadium, we got the Bulldog Stadium, and God knows what other stadium we got running around here. 
Plus, we've got all these schools with all these giant um, playground areas and these giant uh, baseball things. Why can't we just let somebody play on that and have them pay the school? Schools need money. That's ridiculous to spend money on something that we don't need. Okay. Well, I appreciate the phone call, ma'am. I appreciate it very much. That's a very good point, I guess. Well, the fact, I mean, that was our argument at the time, but it's a non-argument now because the stadium is there. It's and a we, white elephant. We gotta, we have to make it, <laughs> make it work the best you can make. I mean, you, you want it to be a success because if it's not, it's going to really affect the general fund of the city of Fresno isn't it, it, very isn't it, tremendously. Isn't it almost falling like in, in a in a bed of quicksand for the city of Fresno? And you're trying to get out. You throw, toss me a rope. I need to get out of here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, uh, it's almost like quicksand. I don't Having know. Having quicksand is a good good well, analogy for it, but I mean, it really is a predicament that well, the city I think is in. Somebody needs to toss the city a rope and get get them out of the quicksand. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, hopefully I a, know. A, a a big beneficiary that <laughs> wants to really help Fresno. Uh, makes that happen. All right, we're talking with Ken Stites and your phone calls here, 436 Me TV, option 11. We're back in a moment. <laughs> When you like Ventura TV Appliance on Facebook, it's nice. But when you love the Samsung big screen we deliver, it's even better. Our website is cool, and it's a good place to start. But you really should touch the merchandise before you buy. Time for that upgrade to an HD 3D web-enabled Samsung TV. Get the best selection, price, and service in town without waiting. Come in to Ventura TV Appliance and touch the merchandise today. Hey, back here on the program, hey, let's put up a, uh, a still frame of the Fulton Mall. And I know you're not on the council now, but I want to take a look at the beautiful downtown Fulton Mall there mm -hmm. in Fresno. And let me ask you a question. Okay, they're going to open this thing up. I want to ask you more than one about this, but... And they're going to open this thing up to traffic. Okay, we've heard the argument. All right, people don't go downtown because of the perception of uh, it being dangerous. There's nothing to do downtown. It's bad for parking. We can't find a parking spot. Now they're going to open this mall up. Is mm -hmm. that going to help bring people downtown and maybe to Grizzly Games? I think, I don't know if it will really help Grizzly Games, but a lot of the businesses that are along Fulton Mall, I think would benefit because you can park right there and be adjacent. But I guess my only issue is I don't understand why it costs $20 million, million dollars to open up a block, you know, that's what I don't understand. So I don't know if the do 20 the million. Of Fresno? Well, I, gonna, I don't understand. I think it'll open up housing. I think it'll open up a lot of businesses along along the Fulton Street area there. I mean, that used to be but when, is it when my dad grew up. Overall? Yeah, see, my dad grew up that Fulton was the drag. You know, I mean, the, the, that was that was the place to be. You know, and I think a lot of those businesses and a lot of those that yeah. area flourished because there people could get to that, and that's the kind of town Fresno is. But how Fresno is isn't the help? kind of town that you park and have to walk a half an hour to. How is opening that up going to help downtown overall as a whole? Because it, it gives a free flow of people going down. That's the theory. I don't know how how real that is, yeah. but the theory behind it is is that. When you have open streets there, you have access to businesses and storefronts yeah. that people will go and and. And this is this is obviously old time footage uh, shot mm -hmm. back in the '60s when Fulton Mall full, full, yes. uh, first opened up. Beautiful 16 millimeter color film here. Somebody actually had the uh, the uh, foresight to to shoot this in color uh, back then. Uh, pretty nice uh, video there, considering the times. Um, we would go so, down there and play in those. Yeah, yes. did you? Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, if you had been sitting on the city council here recently, would you have voted to open that thing up? Well, uh, I don't think I would have spent twenty million dollars to open up that street. You would have said no, basically, <laughs> be, to twenty million. Based it's on federal that money. money, though. It's federal money. Yeah, but, but there's always a city part to the federal money, so there's always a. Meaning, a city contribution to it. There's like always there's, a catch, you're saying. There's yeah. always going to be some city. They, they don't give you a check and say, here's $20 million. They're going to say, put $2 million in or whatever oh, I to see. make okay. that work. Caller, you're on the air. Go ahead. 
Yes, John. Uh, I'm calling about the comment you guys did about uh, opening the street back up there on the Fulton Mall. Go ahead. I think it is really going to make a big difference to help Fresno to bring pa people back into the area. As a child, my dad took us into the Fulton Mall. It was a little safer, but every city as it grows, there's more you know crime and everything. And I think that's going to also help the stadium to bring people to be uh, comfortable in that downtown area. I know the chief of police of uh, Fresno does one of the hardest jobs, and people don't realize we have so much people here now, especially that caller that called that he's from L.A. and that there's more that, that he recognizes the Bulldogs as a gang. We're not, it's not a gang. The people recognize it as a, as a school, as a great thing for the community, and, and um, you know, they, they don't realize that. They come from over there. They also bring a lot of element of gangs from that area, and they don't, they don't see that. But the people that we're from here, we know that that can bring all our community back, uh, John. So I yeah. wanted to okay. tell you that. Thank you, caller. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the call. Um, everybody has a different opinion, but uh, I think we also have to recognize the perception of Fresno outside of Fresno, people who don't live here in Los Angeles or San Francisco or Sacramento can, and they do look at the Fresno State uh, situation as, well. Ah, they're a bunch of gang members. Their, you know, their affiliation, the name alone, conjures up images of gangs. Yeah, I, I, I don't it's know. A, we have to realize the perception of other people, don't you we? You know what? I, I, I would doubt if you went down to L.A. or up to San Francisco, what are the different gang member names? I bet you most people don't have a clue. Okay. You know, the ones in crime probably do, but I mean, most every day, if you're walking down the street, people don't right. really. I, okay. That's my opinion. Anyway, change change topics here, just a real quick. I, and I'm wondering if the mayor of Fresno, uh, Ashley Swearingen, is embarrassed to say that she's from Fresno because she's running against Betty Yee for state controller, as you know. Mm -hmm. She's going to enter her name on the ballot in November as being mayor slash CEO, and no reference to Fresno on the ballot. Well, I I think Ashley has done a great job as a mayor, and I would really like to see her in that position as controller. And I would assume that she has paid a lot of money to get good consultant, good counseling on yeah. what's the best way to go about winning a statewide race. Because as a Republican, right off the bat, you're, you're, you're going to be outnumbered. So I'm assuming they've done some small study groups polling, and all the yeah. polling, and that seems to be the best way for for Ashley to get her name out. She has to win L.A. and San Francisco. I mean, and and to win those areas, they must have done some some things that were recommended to really help help that happen. Another controversial uh, vote by the council on Thursday kind of flew under the radar a little bit, but by a count of four to three, they uh, voted in favor that Brentag Pacific uh, can move its uh, plant from Malaga to Hughes and Nielsen. That's southwest Fresno. You know that area. Um, it's a 53,000 square foot chemical warehouse with 10 storage tanks. Now, people down in southwest Fresno are saying, wait a minute. You're bringing hazardous waste material. You're, you're allowing this company to move into our area. You'd never see that in North Fresno. Well, I, my, my comment is, is, yeah, you probably wouldn't because of the Fresno general plan. The fact of the matter is 50, more than 50% of Fresno is on some kind of government assistance. The, the fact that we need jobs that pay are only a pot and we should be encouraging that and based on the zoning based on the required locations of where a business like that would go southwest fresno is where the so general plan with, has said that should go it has to do with zoning the zoning laws right? yeah the For general industrial. plan yes if you look at the general plan of fresno it tells you can look and say this is where uh office complexes are going to go versus industrial and and so on warehousing is going to go in certain areas so that they're not in residential areas so it, it's a matter of where where the general plan says that kind of business goes but i mean i want to encourage so zoning issue to be, basically yeah, yeah. Okay. i mean you want to encourage business we got 10 seconds you ever going to run for council again 
Oh, I would not say never, but I, I don't see in the near future doing such a thing. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm running a very successful small business. In Eco really, Water, right? Eco Water, Central California, yeah. and we're growing. Can out of time. Okay. It goes by fast. It does. You think an hour would be a lot of time, yeah. but no, it's not. <laughs> no, nope, it isn't. Well, thank, thank you, sir. You. It's always good to see you. No, nope, All right. Ken you. Stites, former Fresno City Councilman here on Connect With mm -hmm. Me, back with another edition tomorrow. If you're planning an event, you might want to check us out on our show tomorrow. Have a great day. Have a great Labor Day, by the way. Stay safe.